You're listening to NBC Sports Radio, and we bring you inside the game 24 hours a day. This is the Kate Delaney Show, where every day is game day. What time is it? What time is it? What time is it? Wow, big news, Tony Romo and the broken bone in his back. No question about it. We're going to talk to Dr. John Michaels, a spine specialist from Dallas, in just a second about this. Now the latest I'm hearing is maybe six to ten weeks. Is that being optimistic? We'll ask Dr. Michaels. This is, again, a big blow to the Dallas Cowboys. No question about that. It's funny because I just read something about week one that the Cowboys were such a lock to beat the Giants and that uh, it was something I read where they were predicting that Tony Romo would just need a minute and 29 to march 72 yards and win, which, which is what he does is what they said. Dr. John Michaels, by the way, is a, I want to tell you a little bit about him. He specializes in pain in the spine. He's also a former NFL first round pick in 96 by the Green Bay Packers. So that means by my math, he is a two time Super Bowl winner with the Packers and with Brett Favre. Dr. Michaels, thanks for uh, joining us on the show. Thank you for having me in today. So you hear the story about Tony Romo. You know about Bax. Tell us how serious this looks to be to you without having examined him. So NFL insiders are speculating that Tony has a compression fracture of his L1 vertebral body. That's his first lumbar vertebral body. And if you saw the hit the other night where he got folded forward in an accordion fashion, that can lead to these compression fractures of these spinal bones and this is different than the fracture that he suffered in 2014 if you remember he broke two transverse processes which are some minor bones that come off the sides of the spine these are the big vertebral bodies the speculation is what he fractured and this is a different injury because if you have any instability of this fracture meaning if that bone slides backwards at all it could compress nerves and could lead to paralysis so this is a much more serious injury Wow. So when, when we hear six to ten weeks, maybe ten is being optimistic? I don't know. How, how, to, how long does it take to heal this? So, again, Cowboys camp is being pretty hush-hush about the severity of the injury. They have not ruled him out for week one, which is more the NFL politics. Like you said, most experts are expecting six to ten weeks. If it is a minor compression fracture, then it's going to be a matter of him becoming pain-free enough to be able to perform his duties as a starting quarterback in the National Football League. And six weeks would be on the conservative side, but most people are saying midseason before we see Tony Romo taking the helm as the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. Wow. Doc, do we, do we see other quarterbacks taking, and we see them taking hits like that, but as you described it, the way he was folded over, that's uh, pretty serious is that obviously when we look at the protection for quarterbacks that's so huge that's why we're always talking about the offensive line because when something like that happens look what it leads to absolutely and you know it was just one of those freak things where tony was just beginning to go into a slide when cliff abel came over the top of him and bent him forward and it's that kind of perfect storm that can lead to an injury like this so whenever a player gets caught in an awkward position that's when bad things happen Oh, yeah, no question about that. So as a former football player, it's interesting for you to watch, you know, how do you you go from football to becoming a doctor? And as somebody who saw these injuries and looked to see what was going on, it's kind of like you got on-the-job training, huh? I did. You know, it was actually pain in my knee that led me to go into medicine. I had no plans of becoming a doctor, but I blew my knee out in my third training camp and had six reconstructive surgeries. And that ended my dream of playing in the NFL. I had expected to play 15 years for the Packers to be one of the all-time greats, and life had a different plan for me. That injury inspired me to try to prevent that from happening to others. So I went into pain management and became the doctor I became to try to keep people living out their lives and their passions pain-free. Yeah, and, and because of what happened with you and because it happened in the football setting, do you think we do enough? Do you think the NFL does enough to protect players, or is there just no way you can do it when you're talking about gladiators that are hitting each other at such you know, fast speeds? The NFL does a very good job of evaluating the rules of the game year in and year out, trying to protect players as much as they can. But these are big, strong, fast men 
who are running after each other. Injuries are just a part of this game. Our bodies were not meant to take the amount of punishment that these players take week in and week out. And every player who's playing the game right now is playing with some kind of nagging injury just because of the nature of the sport. So it becomes a matter of just being tough enough to go out and perform week in and week out and do the duties called upon you of being a National Football League player. Yeah. Do you ever think about being a team doctor or no, that's not as not as rewarding or lucrative? <laughs> you know what? I, I mean, I love the game and I love being involved with it. And obviously, you know, that can be extraordinarily rewarding. But I like also being able to help the general public because I think everybody's an athlete in their own right, whether it's someone who just wants to go to the grocery store and do that pain free or go walk their dog or play a recreational game of tennis or golf. You know, I love being able to keep people living out their day to day passions. Yeah. So if you're a doctor, former football player, and you live in Dallas, uh, is, it, is it politically correct for you to root for the Packers? Do you root for the Packers or the Cowboys? You know, if you came to my office in Dallas, there's all Packers stuff up on my wall, and I catch some slack for it living in Big D. But <laughs> you know what? The, the Packers are the ones who gave me my opportunity to live out my dream as a professional football player. I won a Super Bowl with the Green Bay Packers. I bleed green and gold, so I, I've got to continue to root for my Green Bay Packers. All right, there you go. I love it. Dr. John Michaels, thanks so much for uh, popping on with us. I appreciate you having me in today. Thank you. So you heard what he had to say. Um, amazing, the details that he gave us, talking about the way specifically Romo was hit, that slide, that perfect hit at the time, the perfect storm, and the fact that this injury is different from what happened in 2014 and that, if they were pushing, you know, if he were pushing to come back, there's no way the danger of that bone moving at the very worst could lead to paralysis, uh, which, of course, is, is something they would never want to risk. So looking and listening to what he had to say and looking again at that tape as I went back and looked at it, I'm sure many of you have seen the hit in that Seattle game a couple of days ago. It, he's absolutely right the way that, that he was hit, but then what the MRI reveals, wow, he won't be back till midseason. So then you look at the Dallas Cowboys and where are they going to be midseason? Do the hopes of the team rest on the shoulders of the rookie quarterback, Dak Prescott? Certainly it looks to be that way because, uh, you know, what else are the Dallas Cowboys going to do? And especially because, yes, it's just preseason, so you have to keep reminding yourself, yeah, preseason, preseason, but he's getting the reps. Prescott was getting the reps, and he certainly had some good connections and looked pretty darn good in Dallas, and there's a lot of conversation about that. What what Dak Prescott are you going to see when you get into the season, and what can the Cowboys do to accelerate his learning curve, because there's always a learning curve when you make that leap from college to pros. And, you know, some defy the odds and do it a lot quicker, not just in the preseason, but in the, the regular season. This is why he was drafted. So uh, this could be his big, big moment. And sadly, at the expense of Tony Romo, because you think about 2015 and the fact that Romo missed 12 games because of a broken left collarbone, and uh, they went one and four. One and four. In the four games he started, they were three and one. Oh, my. Stay with us. Kate Delaney, NBC Sports Radio, NBC Sports Radio.com.